Okay, so the materials you need for this project are very simple. You need some 0.8 bare copper colour copper wire, or just some 0.8 gauge wire. I've got a cabochon here in quite a nice quirky size and some bare copper sheet. This is in the gauge 8 mil, so it gives a real nice strong um, setting for your gemstone. Okay, so the tools that you're going to need for the actual sort of wire work inside of things will be your simple flush cutters, some chain nose pliers and some round nose pliers. Okay, so to cut the metal sheet itself there are a couple of options. You've got your tin snips, You've got some curved shear pliers and then of course you have your piercing and jewellery saw here. So whichever one you choose is up to you. It does depend on what kind of shape you're intending to cut out. The tin snips tend to be more for your straight lines. So if you were cutting a ring band say or you were cutting a bangle then I would tend to lean towards these. For something like the shape that we're going to be doing I would use either the cutters or the jewellery saw itself it's up to you because this is going to be quite a plain shape you will be able to achieve that shape with these cutters here but if you want a nice clean precise shape um, then of course you can use the saw as well I'm going to go ahead just for easiness and use the cutters other optional tools are of course your steel plate and your jewellery hammer these will be used for texturing the piece if you wanted to Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plan the setting for this cabochon. Now, I will apologise, the sheet itself is very shiny, highly polished and very reflective, so I do apologise for that. Um, but basically what I've done is I've gone ahead, I've placed the cabochon on, I've done a rough outline around it. I didn't want to go too close to the gemstone because I didn't want to get pen on the actual gemstone itself. Um, and then I've just drawn a very rough outline of the kind of backing that I'm going to want and of course the size. Now another way of doing this is of course taking a piece of plain paper, using a nice soluble glue, just attaching that to your sheet, either printing off a design that you would like, either printing a copyright free design if you wanted to to be able to cut or or saw the shape out, or of course to use free hand drawing if you wanted to. But just for easiness, I've just gone ahead and because this is quite a nice simple shape that we're going to be doing, I have just drawn it straight onto the metal sheet. But as I said, there are options available. Okay, so I am just going to go ahead and use these tin snips just to cut that shape out a little bit and reduce the amount of metal I have to work around. So I've just gone ahead and this is what I was saying about getting that straight line with the tin snips. I'm just going to line that up. So I've reduced the shape down now. So again as I said I could go ahead and just use my jewellery saw and my bench peg and cut that shape out or I could use my cutters here. Okay so I've gone ahead and cut out my shape already and what I'm going to do is place my stone on and make sure I'm happy with the way that it's sitting and work out exactly how I want this to hang as a pendant. Okay it's a qu slightly quirky shape and that's fine. I think I like it like this. So I place it down like this and like this. What I'm going to want to do is catch my stone in that placement. Okay, so what I need to do now is to work out where my drill holes will be that I can put the wire in to secure the gemstone. So I'm going to use a marker pen to do that. Now the other thing, so the other thing that I need to consider is where I want my actual jump ring to go to suspend the pendant. There are a couple of options. So you have a couple of options when it comes to where you're going to put the bale or jump rings or however you want to suspend the pendant. So you could place jump rings here and here. If you did that then you could maybe put some leather cord and hang it on to there. It would look lovely. However if you were to attach it to a chain like that it would pull straight across the middle. So if you wanted to attach it to a chain then I would go for a centre drill and then just add a jump ring for it to suspend from. So, what I'm going to do is just mark out where I want to drill the actual metal. Now, I'm going to do this before I texture it because it will make it easier to drill. Um, it means that if I'm using a Dremel, which I am, so if you're using a Dremel like I will be, then it won't skip. Whereas if it's textured, it's got some sort of... Te See, if the piece is actually textured like this one, 
then it's going to skip on these sort of bumps that you have on the metal so by drilling into a plain piece of metal it's just going to be a bit easier so there are of course other options you could use a metal hole punch to do the drill holes um because of the placement of them they would be fine they wouldn't be too far into the metal for you to do that but just because of my setup i'm going to go ahead and use my dremel so i'm going to mark out where i want it to go so i have my stone where i want it to be and i'm thinking of where i want to catch it so i'm thinking i want to kind of go around here and here so i want the wire to go sort of across to here and then across to say maybe here and then across to here so i'm going to get rid of that one just there um, and just to remove the pen i've just got a little bit of cotton wool just dabbed with some normal nail polish remover and that will remove that marker from your metal sheet so if i place that there i can see roughly where i want that to be and of course i can measure this and place where i want my jump ring to go okay so you can see that i've gone ahead and done the drill holes now i did forget that i actually needed to do two on each side of the gemstone just to be able to get that going across and coming back up and going across again so it was actually um two on each corner of the um gemstone that i've drilled plus my one for my jump ring to suspend a pendant from I've also gone ahead and textured it as you can see now I used my steel plate and my jewelry hammer I used the rounded end of the hammer to create this textured effect you can put any effect that you want onto it but I just really like this effect um, I did lightly hammer the back as well just because I wanted it to look nice from both sides when you do texture obviously when it goes through kind of makes like a dull mattified effect on the back so just by gently tapping the back as well it just adds a little bit more highlight also it just flattens the pendant back out a little bit you'll also see that there's like a plain area just in the center because the gemstone is going to be going over that section i didn't see the need to hammer it you can if you want to there just isn't much need to do so so placing my stone over this you can see it's sitting exactly where i want it to sit so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut myself two lengths of 0.8 wire, um, about sort of 12 inches. Okay, so I've got my wire just here. It's probably going to be a little bit too long, but it's better to have it a little bit too long so that you're able to get the look you want rather than having it too short, as you cannot add into this design. So I'm going to go ahead and take my first piece of wire, bring the ends together, so I get this kind of loop shape here. Can you see? So I'm going to take my wires, take both those ends, and then what I'm going to do is pop them through one side and the two drill holes. And I'll show you in a moment the drill holes I've put them in. So you can see there that I've placed both those ends of the wires in, so it's given me that arch, so I'll be able to pop my gemstone in. And I've gone for the inner pair of drill holes on this side. I'm going to repeat the same on the other side. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that on both sides of the frame. Um, and what I've done is I've just folded those wires flat and got them coming out to the outside of the pendant, just because that's really helping lock that into place. I've then also pushed those arches just to the side so that I'll be able to pop my gemstone in and fold those wires over the gemstone. So I can place my gemstone in. Now you can use either your pliers or you can use your... So you can go ahead and just use your pliers if you want to to just pull that up and over the gemstone. And then obviously when you pull those wires flat at the back that will lock that in. This is just the initial stage so don't panic too much. This can be tweaked. It's fine if the gemstone comes out as well. So there we go you can see i've got the wires just as i want them there now we'll need to tweak them a little bit because i can see that this one's coming across too far so i'm going to come across and just bring that in a little bit more and then pull that back so there we have that's a little bit better don't forget again as i said it can be tweaked so there you have the front 
captured. Now because of the shape of this gemstone I just wanted to go across the top and the bottom just to give it extra security and I just like the look of it as well. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be working from one corner and then the opposite corner. So there will be two opposite corners that will not be being used for the next stage of this process. So I'm going to take this bottom right corner and just wrap that wire just around the bottom of the pendant just to get that out of my way. I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the top left hand corner again just to get that wire out of my way so that I can focus just on these two wires. What I'm going to do now is just take the whole piece, turn it over and when I did that I don't know if you could see but I hold everything stable and I'm going to feed this wire through and just pull that nice and tight so it's flat. Now you will need to check the front because sometimes as you can see just there it's lifted a little bit so you will have to take a little bit of time well actually that will be fine with the gemstone so have a little look now if you felt you wanted to tweak that what you would do is just kind of straighten straighten this wire out here almost push it back a little bit and you're just going to want to come in and just kind of So I've just kind of fed that wire through with my pliers from the front. You can see it's kind of looped out across the back. And then just try and encourage that to go to the front. Okay, and that will give you a nice smooth finish. Turn the whole piece over and do the same on the opposite corner. So again, we're coming up and through. Keep it nice and controlled as much as you can. Keep all that as stable as you can. And then when I get to this part here, I'm just going to try and control that so it really goes around nice and smooth. And so your stone is ready. So what I now want to do is bring this wire across and into the opposite drill hole. And again, just taking your pliers, feed that across. Make sure you've got that sitting how you want it to go. Okay, so you can see that's gone across there. And that's just really going to catch that gemstone into place and give it that complete stability. I'm going to repeat on this corner here over to the opposite side, through that drill hole, pull that wire through. So take your time because obviously this wire is getting a little bit work hardened because it is going through a process. So just straighten that out. There we go. Okay, and that effectively has captured your gemstone into place. And now what I want to do before I finish the back off is just really tweak these front wires and be happy visually with the way that they are. Okay, be aware that obviously any movement that you make is going to affect the way that they are from the front and back. So I'm quite liking that it's being pulled in like this and I think I'm just going to go with that and really sort of bring that in. So I'm just using my chain nose pliers just to create angles. So I'm holding them quite flat and just almost pushing against the stone and just twisting my hand to create that bend in the wire. You've got a choice of doing it like that, or we could kind of go the opposite way and bring it so it comes in like this. But again, you don't want to overwork this too much because it's going to affect the way it works visually. In fact, I think I quite like it like that. So I'm going to leave it like that. So from the front, that stone cannot go anywhere. So now all I need to do is unravel these wires turn the piece over so that we can work on finishing this pendant. So bringing that back here, what you'll find when you turn the piece over is that you'll have two pairs of wires next to each other. So I'm going to reduce these down to quite a small amount because you don't need that length of wire anymore. And one thing I'll note is that whilst I'm doing this, I'm really putting pressure across the whole of the front of the piece to really make sure that all that work we've done 
stays where it was meant to be. So what I'm going to do now is simply take some round nose pliers and I'm just going to lock this into place by pulling it really tight and I'm just pushing my pliers quite tight against that metal into a little spiral. And I really pull that tight so that I can make sure that that's going to do exactly as I want that to do. So I'm going to do that with both of these. You can do them in the same direction or you can do them in opposite directions but you want to make sure that we're keeping that nice and tight. So I've pulled that nice and tight there and then that top section is really stable and secure and then I'm just going to repeat the same on these wires here. As I said I'm really making sure that that tension is nice and tight so I'm simply putting my pliers right in at the end and I'm just rolling doesn't have to be the best spiral in the world we just want that wire to roll and really pull at that tension so again the same on this side I had to probably go in that direction just to show you how we can go in an opposite direction tuck that end in because again we don't want any sharp edges and we're just going to really roll that wire and again taking my pliers I'm just gently going over and pushing that spiral to that metal and when you run your hands over it there's no sharp edges so that's nice and smooth and comfortable to wear when you turn that piece over there's your finished pendant that stone is not going anywhere you can still tweak these wires if you wanted to but I would try not to overwork them if you can avoid it and then the final touch is to simply okay so the final touch is to take a jump ring pop that through that drill hole that we placed there close that you can then add your chain and you have your finished pendant um, I forgot to mention and I'll just mention now I used a one mil sized drill bit just to create these drill holes and there you have your pendant. I hope you enjoy.